We're live. What up, leaguers? Welcome to the spectacular spoiler D. Uh, yo, how many weeks in a row am I going to mess up the intro to this voice, man? What up, <laughs> leaguers? Welcome to the spectacular spoiler league. I'm the Pandan Superman, the mayor of Hype City, Hazy Roman. As always, I'm joined by the God of Night, the Prime Minister of Post Production, Deep Voice. And today, today we're in the Hall of Spoilers to talk about Arrow Week 7, everybody. It's the oh, weekly one baby. shot. The Arrowverse weekly one shot. We're talking about all four episodes of the Arrowverse shows this week. Thanksgiving was yesterday. Happy belated Thanksgiving. And we didn't do a live stream because of Thanksgiving because we spent time with our families. You know, we got families in the whole of sports. You know what I'm saying? And you guys understand that. But we're here. We're talking about it now. Deep voice. First, we're going to start off with a top five power ranking. So you know the deal. Mm. We got to throw something in there, man. Power rankings, number five, deep voice, what it is. Yeah, this week uh, threw a bit of a curveball at okay. us. You know, it okay. made it a little difficult. A lot of last minute decisions. Uh, <laughs> but for, for my number five in the power rankings, it's not a specific, it, it's two people mm-hmm. for a specific reason, and that's the arrow bromance between Oliver and your boy John Diggle. I thought that okay. was probably the best part of this last episode, which was called Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. Right? Episode eight, uh, episode seven, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, I thought that was the most compelling part of the interview. I mean, of the interview. Of the uh, the episode. <laughs> the interview. <laughs> Where basically they confront each other, and they had a very adult conversation. A very compelling yeah. conversation where I was kind of asking myself, uh, who's right and who's wrong? I mean, they're both right. They're both wrong. They're both at fault, but both of them kind of have a point. And then on top of that, afterwards, they kind of come together and they, you know, let cooler heads prevail. And they're like, you know, you're my boy. I see what you're doing. You've been making sacrifices for me. He's like, nah, Oliver. I I let this get to my head. And he's like, no, no, let's hug it out. We're boys. It's all good. And I was like, you know, that's good. We we haven't gotten that in a while. And Arrow did a good job um, of portraying that because you know a lot of the times we get that from Legends of Tomorrow they're trying to ham fist that with uh, yeah. Citizen Bumass and Ray, and it just doesn't you know, work. That's a good point. That's a good point. That's a yeah. good point. We we always need yeah. the bromances. I mean, lo- bromances in comic book hist- uh, in comic book uh, uh, media are legendary. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. I never thought of it that way. Like honestly, you bring up a good point, man. Like the way Legends of Tomorrow does Ray Ray Allen. And friggin' Citizen Bumass is just, it's too much for me. Like, it's like, it's not even, and, and like, to be honest with you, they, quite frankly, they're almost the same people sometimes. And it's not, it's just not, it's not intriguing to me. There's no emotion there. But you're right with Diggle and Oliver this week. I appreciated the fact that they didn't just prolong the, 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 the anger and the resentment, you know, for, you know, Diggle keeping a secret about his steroid use and, or his drug use, whatever that thing he was taking was. Mm-hmm. They just kind of handled it in the episode. And case closed, they yeah. just moved on. Yeah, you know choked up, Hazy. Yeah, okay, choked up. Yeah, <laughs> talking about this, you know? Ooh, I gotta, I gotta stop. But nah, I mean, it was, it was dope, man. It was dope. That's a good one. That's a good. I like that pick. I like that pick. Um, my number five this week is none other than a flashback. Shout out to the Flash, Harrison Wells from Word. season one, popping up, aka Eobard Dawn. I loved how. They re like did the uh, sort of the particle accelerator explosion and showing Harrison Wells from that first season of The Flash again and just kind of like going through that and showing how the thinker came to be. And I was like, you know, th- this season of Flash is somewhat of a reboot for The Flash. You know, it's mm-hmm. somewhat of a like restart. La- last season, like everyone's aware, last season just didn't fire in all cylinders. You know, they they they, they felt like they didn't deliver what they wanted to deliver but you know with i'm showing harrison well it just this it just made me think even more this season is really trying to get back to the to sort of the core of what the flash was when it started in a sense yes. i mean obviously we're at an evolution to the team mm-hmm. but i mean just showing harrison wells like i mean <laughs> tom cavanaugh is never better than when he's playing like that harrison wells slash eobard thawne hybrid just like he still has the exudes that creepiness, but also that like cocky confidence and like ability that Harrison Wells exhibited in season one, Word. which sort of made that twist that he was Eobard thought even crazier. But I like that a lot. So, uh, you know, that was yeah. pretty dope. And I like that little nod that he kind of gave uh, DeVoe. He was like, he was like, good luck as if, because yeah. he's from the future. So he knows. Right, right. 
He, he knows, right. Exactly. That was just, like I said, just the, the creepiness factor was just all there. I love how all the Flash's villains know about the bow except the Flash. And I just think that's, <laughs> I think that's a lot. Like, I think that's just very telling about, like, the time travel stuff they got going on in the Flash. And that's dope to me. I mean, that's the Flash. Fastest man alive, always a step behind. That's true, man. That's I mean, the, the Flash thinker, right there. <laughs> and, and I love how the thinker dropped that, like, yo. I am the fastest mind alive. I was like, all right, I feel you. I feel you thinking. I feel you thinking. I feel you thinking of names and stuff. I was like, I like you. But uh, anyway, Deep Boys, what you got for number four, man? Yeah, well, what I got is a lot of traffic noise outside, if you can excuse that, while I go yeah. with my number four pick <laughs> in my week seven power rankings. And yeah. uh, I'm actually going to go with uh, Mick Rory for number four. Mick Rory? Mick Rory, okay. Legends of Tomorrow. You know, wow, went that's to... the first time appearance for him. I know. I know. I mean, he's, he's been he's been kind of flowing around, neither yeah. here nor there. Yeah, but yeah. I, um, I mean, in terms of I guess the whole father son type of storyline, this is the one that I thought stunk the least out of the ones that we've seen. Uh, again, bring up against yeah. Citizen Butt Mass. <laughs> I mean, uh, honestly, I, li- I like I like the Ray Palmer as a kid thing. True, I like that one. It's but his his like father his father was nowhere to nowhere to be seen though. Good point. Good point. Good yeah, point. Yeah, That's but, a good point. But no, no, that that was a good one as well. And that was a great episode when they went back in time to to meet up with young Ray Palmer and all that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I think you know, kind of finding some sort of, I guess, a little bit of character growth for Mick Roy, just like a just oh, infinitesimal, just amount. Finally. And yeah, but but yeah. I thought they did it well. They did it in a in a way that kind of made sense. They didn't really uh, have the character do a total one eighty. You know that we we we've gotten little bits and pieces that McRory's uh, actually a softy under all that kind of charred skin that he's got. Uh, yeah. And then for him to, I don't know. I, I guess they 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 handled it well. The I, I mean, it was kind of corny the way that they were both talking, like kind of all gravelly and all that. But I think just yeah. the underlying message and how he kind of, I guess, gave his father a little bit of a push in the right direction. I thought yeah. that was interestingly done in an episode where, you know, nothing else really kind of captivated me or grabbed me too much. Yeah, you know, honestly, I got to be honest, like, I really didn't like the Mick Rory father-son thing. Mm-hmm. I just, per, it wasn't bad. It's just that, like, I respected the fact that, that Rory was kind of conflicted because, you know, he killed his parents, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he killed his, or he killed his father, you know what I mean? Like, and he doesn't regret it. But, you know, for me, I'm just kind of like, I just felt like some of the moments, like, for particularly when he you know, seems to betray, you know, uh, Citizen Bumass. I don't even remember his name at this point. I just call him Citizen Bumass. <laughs> but, and then he kind of, like, goes along with his father. And, like, I guess he was trying to, like, have... I guess he was trying to protect everyone by going along with his father as opposed to, you know, you know, uh, saying, no, nah, I'm not doing this and getting captured. Like, I guess that's what he was doing. But I just felt like the way it was done was just, like, it was just a little too much. Like, they could have at least showed him be like, oh, yeah, like, I'll go along with you. And, and so you kind of know, but... Because I feel like that swerve was like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm protecting the people. It's just like, I don't know. But I did like the, the heartfelt moment where they, uh, you know, where he was kind of like, yo, you saved me from doing something wrong there. R- Rory's dad was like, you saved me from doing something that I can never come back from. I don't know what effect that's going to have on the timeline because that's bound to have an effect. Like, I remember when Stein talked to his younger self and was like, hey, man, you need to appreciate that girl. And then all of a sudden he's got a, a daughter, you know what yeah. I mean, in the future. Like, I felt like that could have some bearing on the future, maybe, but I was like, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. But my number four, mm-hmm. my number four is actually from Supergirl, okay? Uh-oh. My, my number four is Monel making a return. <laughs> and the reason why I'm talking about Monel <laughs> is because Monel, over everybody, is married to Saturn Girl, man. My man, Hold I mean, down. he stepped up. He stepped up, man. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, my man, my nail get in the gut. And I was like, All right, I see you, man. See, he's planting this. He's like, yo, I got my 21st, I got my 21st century thing, right? Mm-hmm. And then I also got my 31st century thing, <laughs> right? And they can't fight with each other because they're a millennial. Woo! <laughs> I mean, now they're in the same time, so you yeah. know it's a little bit tough. But he could be like, hey, it was seven years, it was seven years. <laughs> you know, like, but I was like, yo, when I saw Saturn Girl, I was like. Oh, no. I, was like, I was like, bro. I was like, damn, man. I was like, yo. I mean, <laughs> somebody said in the chat, Predator Magnus said in the chat, Saturn Girl is greater than Supergirl. I mean, 
Yeah, listen, I'm, <laughs> listen, I'm being a dog right now. Yeah. I'm never a dog on this show. I'm being a dog right now. <laughs> Shout out to my out, man. At number four, man. All right, that's my only reason for putting him at number four, man. He's back, and he's get, he's getting hits, man. He's getting hits. I, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that, man. But who's your who's your number three, boys? <laughs> my number three is, is kind of minor, but... Okay. It, it honestly, it was one of the biggest surprises that I had this entire week. Okay, what you got? My number three on this list is they actually had Martian Manhunter use one of his powers. <laughs> they finally did something for two seconds. <laughs> for two seconds, I had a smile on my face. I couldn't believe it. My man Martian Manhunter uh, came in. He brought a Supergirl on his right. Uh, what's his other face? Computer uh, Win. geek nerd Win on his left. <laughs> and he was like, hold up. I forgot I got these density powers because they don't let me do shite on this show. <laughs> I appreciate that because Marshall, he's so nerfed in the Arrowverse and he's not going to be in the uh, the crossover. You know what I'm saying? He's not going to have a role in the crossover. So it's just kind of like, come on, man. You know what I'm saying? But I mean... Uh, yeah, I got some. I got a little. Listen, all right. I was, I was thinking about. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Uh, I was gonna level with you guys. Yes. I was thinking about putting Martian Manhunter on my bum ass list, mm-hmm. only because I'm like, you finally got. You all talk about. Yeah, I'm the last Martian. I'm the last Martian. <laughs> hey, did you know I'm the last Martian? Hey, I've never met you before. I'm the last Martian. And you finally get your father back, and you treat him like you don't want him around. I'm like, no. Ridiculous. Like. That was ridiculous. Unbelievable. That was silly. Unbelievable. I was like, that was silly. I was like, that was a little silly. But I was like, you know what? You get a free pass because they're not using you and they clearly don't know what to do with you. It's not your fault. This is the rider's fault. But anyway, Marshall Man Hunter for actually doing something. Number three, I respect you for that. <laughs> Bravo, sir. Bravo, man. My number three yes. is the one and only, man. Okay? He, there's no monkeying around with this person. Uh-oh. I'm talking about Gorilla Grodd, baby. <laughs> Holding oh, Neil. It down. <laughs> Holding it down in the Vietnam. What was the name she was calling him? The girl was calling him? She was like, Ying Yang Ma. I was like, whoa. <laughs> I was like, what was the name that she said? Like, I'm not even trying to be, I'm not being racist or anything. I was just like, yo, like she said it so fast. I think it was like, Um Joy Nyoi or something like that. Uh-huh. I was like, damn, that's actually a dope name. So like, the name just kind of had like this level of like intimidation. The, the, you know what I mean? I kind of liked it. Like, I kind of liked that he got, he. <laughs> He went to Vietnam and like, yo, I, this is my place, and I'm gonna get like, I'm gonna ingrain myself uh-huh. to the point where I'm sort of like uh, of, of mythological status. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? The, the I funny think it was thing, enjoy more or something. I think it was enjoy more. She was calling him. I the, was like, yo, I was kind of hot. I like that. The funny thing about that scene is she said that name, and I was like, yeah. okay. But then after that, she said he's a new god, and I had to rewind it, and I'm like, which new god is this? And I rewind it like three times, I'm like, what? <laughs> well, I've never heard of this one. About that. <laughs> You right about that. She deceived me. DC, you can't just go casually mention new gods and have it not be a new god. Like, you know, one of the new gods, like Orion, like, you know, the, the, the people that battle Apocalypse. They knew they knew they were doing that. They knew what they it's, were doing. It, it was like, that was it's a little like a, bit of a wink wink. Yeah, it was like another drop, another little Easter egg, like the mascara. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But, you know, Grod was holding it down, man. Like, I mean, Grod, you know, you know, Grod is coming in there. I like how they stepped up his intelligence. I don't know. I mean, if you guys have been noticing, you know, let me know in the comments if you, if if you have been. But Grodd, every time they show him, has become become more uh more intelligent. Speaking before he used to like speaking broken sentences when he first appeared in the Arrowverse. Now he's speaking like fully coherently. You know, like it's it's pretty straightforward. He's mind controlling people left and right. I was like, yo, Grodd is a beast. And like, kudos to the people that do Legends and the people that do the Arrowverse. For consistently making Grodd look really good, like they rend, they they create and render a, a a gorilla in full CG and make it look fantastic. Indeed, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Silence double double seven. He said he noticed. Like Gorilla Grodd has become more intelligent. I think that's. I love his it's character nice development. Touch. It's a nice touch. It's a nice touch, and I I just felt like his presence. You know, they mentioned um, Apocalypse Now, right? Which is a movie set in Vietnam. Uh, said during the Vietnam War, it's based on a book, uh, Heart of Darkness. Mm-hmm. And uh, in a way, Gorilla Grodd, they mentioned Colonel Kurtz in that, in that uh, you know episode. In a way, Gorilla Grodd kind of felt that way because that's the he Marlon was hiding Brando in... character? Right, that's Marlon Brando's character. He's like hiding in the shadows, and when they first reveal him, it's sort of like how they first reveal Colonel Kurtz 
in that movie, kind of like half bathed in light and half in the darkness. And I was like, that's kind of dope. That's kind of dope, man. But uh, what, what up, Crazy Gaming? Shout out to you, man. But uh, Deep Boys, man, number two. Number, number two on my power rankings. It, this is the most that Martian Manhunter will probably get any type of shout out on any of these lists. <laughs> but listen, I have to, we have to give love to the OG Martian Manhunter. And that's Martian Manhunter's dad, who played or voiced Martian Manhunter back in the Justice League and Justice League Unlimited days. Props yep. to that man. Yes. I, sh I should have looked up his name. Unfortunately, yeah, I don't have I can it look up for in you, hand. Man. I can look up for you. But like you said, Martian Manhunter was being a bit of a bum ass this episode. His dad was <laughs> prisoner for 300 years. 300 <laughs> years. And he doesn't even want to spend an afternoon with your boy? Yeah, I... Come on, that was, man. Yeah, man. He was keeping it real. You know, he was he was being very, you know, very appreciative of his son and being cool, keeping a level head, being like, listen, man, this is your life. His name is Carl Lum Lumbly, by the way. No doubt. Um, great actor. Great yes. actor. Yes. Um, but, you know, it, it, like, I felt like he was being very diplomatic given the fact that it's like, yo, you've been in prison for 300 years and your son is, like, essentially just marginalizing you because... He's just focused on the job. And that's sort of my problem with Marshall Manhunter, which, you know, we, we got a video coming up in which I sort of talk about that. But mm -hmm. my issue with Marshall Manhunter is that they kind of, like, made him sort of militaristic uh, by having him focus so much on the DEO. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'd like to see them, I'd like to see them, uh, you know, do something a little differently with him in just terms of, in terms of the way he shows his emotion, which they seem to be doing with him moving in with his father. Yeah. I'm like, yo, John, I was like, John Johns, you didn't have an apartment before? <laughs> I guess he just lived in the DEO headquarters the whole time. I, 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 I was like, what, what did you live in a crawl space? Like, <laughs> I don't understand. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't get that, man. But, but anyway, man, that's a good, that's a good number two, yeah. man. Carl Lumbly, shout outs to you, holding it down in the, in the, in the Justice League TV animated series and Justice League Unlimited. I mean, that was, that's like one of the quintessential shows you should watch. If you're like a DC Comics fan and you're trying to watch some animated stuff, yeah. like that's one of the best. Those two series are, are some of the best, like comic book adventure stories of all time. And right? it'll let you know why we feel the way we feel with how they treat Martian Manhunter on the show. Yes, you know what I'm saying, and the fact that you know Martian Manhunter's not in the Justice League in the movies, DC. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> My number two, okay, is the Thinker and the Mechanic, Clifford DeVoe and Mara Lee's. Devo, okay, holding it down on the flash, like their I love how their relationship sort of echoed uh Barry Allen's and Iris's relationship mm -hmm. because you know the thinker and Marilise, I also like that they stepped up the mechanic in the in the sense that like she's a very big part of who the thinker is. This isn't just like, oh, the thinker's the because I mean I felt like the way they kind of played it off, uh, you know, in the previous episodes leading up to this one. It sort of felt like until you found out he was she was his wife in the last episode. It felt like she was more like an assistant. Mm -hmm. and she was kind of taking orders. Yeah. I had no idea that was his wife before last last week. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And even the last week, I was like, oh, they fake him. Like, is he just pretending that that's his <laughs> wife? You know what I'm saying, just for the sake of you know keep you know keeping up appearances. Right. But like this week, they kind of showed the love that they had and just his his slowly degrading mental state due to the fact that you know ironically he has enhanced mental capabilities. But because he's dying, that just adds sort of another layer. And it, it it creates this notion that it's like, this is why this guy is trying to do what he's trying to do. You know what I'm saying? I do feel like they need to explain a little bit what he meant by like trying to save the world. Like, because from my understanding, he was in a classroom, he was a professor. Yeah. And he's like, I feel like I can't articulate. I can't, I can't, you know, teach these kids like I need to teach these kids. But I'm like, but what is your end game? Like, you don't go from, hey, I, I think I could be a better teacher to say, I'm gonna save the world by enhancing my mind. Like, there's a leap there. Yeah, there's and some, I want some to, going to, to on. Explain that. I mean, there it's it's like every episode they're giving us just a little morsel. Like we're right. not we're not really sure what it is uh, that he's up to and why he's doing it. But yeah. you know, even though this season could be a little bit better, I, I do. I, it's a different take. I think it's kind of interesting the way that they're kind of developing this character from episode yeah. to episode as opposed to, let's say, Savitar last season where we kind of understood right. what he was up to right. almost right away. And then, you know, they revealed, the big reveal was, that, oh, he's he's buried but with grated cheese on his face, something like that. You know, it's funny you said grated cheese on his face because every time I hear Savitar, I even start <laughs> craving one of two things. One is lasagna, yeah. okay? <laughs> or some Elio's pizza. 
<laughs> you look like them Elio's pizzas that you put in the <laughs> you take out the freezer. <laughs> Those square pizzas that they serve at uh, the cafeterias when you were in uh, elementary school yeah man those those the pizza that I would just rip off like like there was loose leaf on top of the crust <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, the second thing I start craving is just waffles man cause my man got that waffle <laughs> iron print on his face oh man <laughs> I'm cracking up right now I'm tearing up but yeah man I mean uh, Neon Fox Productions said he felt so bad for the thinker, uh, especially when he was teaching and all his students were on their phones. LOL. Yo, I felt bad too because I was like, like that's like a level of disrespect. I was in college, boys. You were in college. Yeah. Like sometimes you were a little bit just kind of like you know not paying attention to the professor, but like they were like really not paying. They were being like disrespectful. Mm-hmm. I was about to. I would have slammed that just like, hey, hey. <laughs> you want a pop quiz next class? <laughs> Y'all better listen to me. I got homework for y'all. <laughs> Make sure you write your paper. Like, I, I felt bad for him in that situation, too. But, uh, yeah. you know, I I like the build that they're giving the thinker. Um, I love the fact that he's sort of like, even the way he, like, talks and he, the way he's, his mannerisms are, it's almost like it, it gives the impression that he's always got something on his mind. Like, the, the moment doesn't matter because he's already ahead of you. Word. I don't know how to explain it. He's got sort of like this twitchiness to him. Yeah. Where it's just kind of like, you know, you ask him a question, he's just like, you know, don't don't bother me with that because yeah, I'm all, right. I'm more, I'm on top of this. It's gonna be interesting to see how that uh you know affects the the plan that Team Flash has for him because ultimately, I mean, his downfall is likely gonna be that you know he's he's a little too cocky, which is what something we've already seen already where he's like I got he's like I got they, this. They play to his emotions, and that's exactly. kind of what you saw in that, this last episode. Exactly, I but mean, when I, you look at you can't be you're definitely not smarter than him, but right. you could definitely play to his ego. And make right, cause exactly. them to make a mistake. Exactly, and I think that it's it's pretty cool that I mean, when you think about all the other villains for the other uh, seasons of the Flash, you know, I could be wrong about this, but this might be the earliest that they've actually gone into a villain's a primary villain's motivations. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I also like the fact that he literally belittled every other villain that came before. He's like, "Yo, you're dealing with all these. You're dealing with monkeys, Flash. You're dealing with people <laughs> with ice guns." Those were all people with toys. <laughs> I'm the real deal. Holy deal. I was like, damn. I was like, Davo. I was like, power rankings, power rankings. <laughs> I was on my phone. I was like, Clifford Davo. I had the top. I was like, y'all, that's pretty dope, yeah, man. He, he kind of sunned them. He was like, you may Yo, be he's... fastest on your feet, but you're not faster <laughs> than me when it comes to thinking. Word. And Barry's a smart about... guy. All these guys are smart. Yeah. Team Arrow. Yeah. Barry Allen, Cisco. And, and, and Caitlin and Harrison Wells, they're smart people. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're all smart people. Not to say Joe West and Iris aren't, but mm-hmm. in terms of, like, education, like, they clearly have shown they're, like, you know, they've got some, like, some some stuff there, man. But anyway, Deep Boys, numero uno, what is your number one pick for this week? My what number one pick is rather shallow. And it's one that you've okay. already selected on here. And you probably okay. already know who it is. But it's your boy, Monel, coming back. After a seven-year hiatus, like you said, he's got a 31st century bitty. He's got a 21st century bitty. Yo, my man. And, and you know what's neither that? one of them called the quits. Like, Supergirl didn't seem like she called the quits. She's still kind of like, you know, maybe maybe if he's not looking, I could, like, smash her through the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Supergirl, Supergirl still got hopes. You know what I'm saying? But credit, credit to, to Monel. You know why? Because Monel, in the seven years that have passed, my man, he 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 stayed in the gym and he worked on his jump shot. So when he so when he saw Saturn girl, he could shoot that shot from the stratosphere. Bow, son, get his girl. So my man shot his shot and he did it up, man. I was like, damn, my man, my Listen, this, he 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 came back. He came back without a weakness to let. He yep. came back with you know a rugged physique and look. Yeah, I like the beard, the facial hair. I'm like my man. Oh, you go, you go, man. You stepped up. And he, here looking all fresh. He's much more serious now. I mean, remember yeah, when, when, yeah. when he was first introduced? You know, he's a Daxamite yeah. and he's a playboy and all that. But now he's a married man. He's yeah, all about yeah. that business. <laughs> he's all I about do the still, business. I'll never feel comfortable with them just calling him Monel and not explaining that he has like the same last name as as Kara's <laughs> cousin. I, I I still feel a little uncomfortable about that. But uh, you know, it, it's he's that's a good number one. But uh, my number one, baby. Uh-oh. Okay, my number one is the man returning 
just in time for the crossover to the Green Arrow mantle. And that's the the, the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> Oliver Queen, doing it all this week, man. Nice. Mayor, father, criminal, Green Arrow, like <laughs> best friend. He was doing everything, He was man. doing time, too. He was saving the city, and he was saving me. Ooh. I was like this. I was like, he was doing time right. I mean, it was it was dope, man. I mean, he's over here fighting off uh, Agent uh, Samandra Watson and whatnot. Her mm -hmm. being all sassy, coming, <laughs> coming at him, arrest him. I was like, yo, you got to call You got to call it, Agent Watson. There's no need <laughs> for the hostilities. But I mean, I just loved him doing it all in terms of interaction. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like he's interacting with the team. He's interacting with Diggle. He's interacting with his son. Mm -hmm. He's interacting with you know. Uh, Agent Watson and all everything that Stephen Amell's doing is Oliver Queen just works, you know. Like I just love that in his personal life he seems a little bit happier, or he seemed a little bit happier. I just hate. I just I got so sick of the dire Oliver Queen. He's like, mm -hmm, I got a villain to fight. I'm angry and all this. Like I liked the wisdom that he was bestowing. I like that he called John Diggle out. I like that he called him out. He's like, yo, you. I mean, you, you should have told me, but you're right. I did put your family before I put my family before your family. Yeah. That was wrong. And that's something we talked about before. It's like, yo, he's like, yo, I got a son. I don't, I don't, I don't want him to, you know, I don't want him to not have his father. It's like, well, what about John Diggle Jr.? You know what I'm saying? Right. So, uh, Oliver Queen of my number one deep voice, but it's time to get into some bum access, man. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay, the worst, uh, the worst everybody, uh -oh. the uh -oh. Here we go. First, Here we go. Week seven. Okay. Here we what? go. Do we got the boys numero three? What you got? Top three bum asses this week. Oh damn! Top three? I didn't realize that. I wrote I wrote down like five. Oh, I'm sorry. Top five. My bad. Top, Top five. five. <laughs> I'm over. I'm over here eliminating. <laughs> I'm over. No, I thought it was. Is it top three? It is top three. It is top three. Top three. Nah, I had like I had like six myself. I had to take people off. Right, nah, top three. Top three? Yeah. Top three. Top three. Okay. Uh, top three. <laughs> I'm gonna throw these. I'm gonna like, throw these. You're like, damn! I wanted to put some of these people on, and now I can't. <laughs> I, I, I'm cheating. I'm gonna throw two of these together because they were from the same episode. But one, it was whoever ate Jax's mom's pecan pie <laughs> and left the container in the fridge. Get <laughs> out of here! You're a bum ass. You know who you are. I think was it was it was it uh, Madame Curie? Because I, I oh yeah, I thought that might be who it was. I think yes. it was Madame Curie. Yes. And I was like, I mean, bro, honorable nice. mentions for bum asses. <laughs> So Isaac Newton's wig. I mean, <laughs> my God, man. I was like, yo, Isaac Newton, come to my hood, son. I'll find you a nice hairdresser to get your hair did, man. Because that weave was broke, son. That wig was broken, son. Word. It was wiggity whack, man. I thought with that Stephen wiggity A. Whack. Smith uh, hairline. But my, <laughs> <laughs> my real number three yeah. <laughs> is Lyndon Baines Johnson. Who's that? LBJ, oh. the president of the United States during the Vietnam War. The he worst. Was such a dork, he, was he was such, such a, a bum. He was such a, a goof. <laughs> My man is. I don't know why he's out there in the front lines. Regardless of that, he's with the military, and then he's walking into a, a, a minefield, and instead of being a sensible individual, he's like, oh boy, this is a humdinger. This is a boy. Oh boy, this is sure is some. It, it's it's when Legends' heaviness is at its worst, and that was bad. It was, that was bad. bad. Also, that whole minefield sequence was just silly altogether. I, I like how I'm like a, Jack shot a proof. Yeah, I like Jack how, shot a proof I, himself. I was like, it was I like, silly. I like how they froze it with one of those like compressed air cans. I don't know what that was. Because he stepped <laughs> on the like, landmine. Yeah. I was like, yo, I was like, he got the, the coolant from Metal Gear Solid too. He <laughs> sprayed it on the landmine. I was like, where did he get that from, man? I was like, yeah, it was just. I don't know, man. I, I wasn't. I wasn't feeling LBJ too. And like, you know, I, I, I honestly, <laughs> this is kind of sounding good to sound messed up. Mm -hmm. But I was looking at the actor portraying him, yeah. and I looked at his nose. I thought his nose was fake, bro, because mm. his nose was mad big, bro. I, I thought it was. Why did he, is it fake? I, uh, maybe, maybe. I mean, I thought his I ears. Don't know. I thought his ears and nose were fake because I've seen like other people what? play that uh, play that president, and he had like okay. a big nose and big ears, and they usually yeah. give him prosthetics. Oh, okay. Cause I'm like, yo, I'm looking at his face, man. I'm like, yo, he really looked like he has a testicle on his face. I was like, I don't, I was like, I don't understand this. Like, it just looked really, it looked really bad. He looked like he had, like, I don't know. It was just my number three. <laughs> <laughs> my number three is also from Legends of Tomorrow, yeah. and it's Amaya. Okay, 
I know, I know, Maya, you're struggling with Kawasa being your daughter. I get it. But you're going to go and face down Gorilla Grodd by yourself? <laughs> she had a... By yourself? She had like a dead shot arm cannon or something. What was that? She missed. It, it was it the doesn't matter pit what boy. She had, she she had the missed. pit boy. Come on, Hazy. She had the pit boy. I mean, she, walked into, <laughs> she walked in the tent and Grodd is like, you tried to mess with me? <laughs> like, he was like, what? He was like, how dare you? Psychic attack. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, Vixen, what is you doing, baby? Oh, yeah. Why are you going in there alone, baby? Like, why are you doing that? I was like, yo, get out of here, son. I was like, I know you in some type of emotional state, but, uh, you know, get that out of here, man. Get that out of here, man. I, I, I was, I was, no, I, I agree but anyway, anyway, number two, man, what you got for number two? Uh, number two, <laughs> number two is Steven ass Felicity. <laughs> Why Felicity? They got my man Curtis Holt, like black Elvis out here coming out with world changing technology. He's a partner. In in the in their endeavors, and she's taking all the credit. She's taking all the money. She's making all the decisions. Bro, she spent five hundred thousand dollars on Oliver Queen's bill. Didn't even ask him. Didn't even give my man a phone call. That's an, that's money from investors, bro. You can't just spend investors. Five hundred thousand dollars. My God, man. That I mean, she didn't even ask him. I don't even think. Listen, I think I, I honestly don't even know if he knows about that because I'm like, how did how no, she, that she, not she told him? Fight? She told him, oh but, or God. she was like about that invest the money or Angel invested money and they cut the scene because you know Curtis Hall was about to power driver do that table. <laughs> they but, cut the scene because he was gonna cut her throat. <laughs> that was and, and he was paying five hundred thousand dollars like that. And, and he had a good point because she was getting up in his face about how yeah. he gave Diggle the whatever nanotech technology it was. Yeah, to kind yeah. of fix his, his shoulder, and he's like, "What would you do that? It's our, fr- it's, it's my friend, in this experimental like, technology." And I'm like, "Listen," he, he said, "I created that technology, and yeah, you're yeah. walking because I created that technology." Yo, he sunder. <laughs> I was like, "Bro," I was like, "Yo, he sunder Felicity when he said that." He was like, "My design." I was like, "God," I was like, "Ooh, ooh." I mean, crazy game is a chat called Felicity and Gold Digger. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say that, but it just. Yeah, Felicity was she was on some stuff this week. That being said, you know, uh to Mr. Terrific definitely shouldn't have injected Diggle in that with that prototype drug. You know, I know he True. I know Diggle wanted that, but like that's just unscientific. You know what I'm saying? You don't inject somebody with some prototype stuff, man. They ain't run no blood tests, nothing like that. You know, uh Diggle's out here. I mean, he's over here saying, like, yo, he could be paralyzed. Like that's <laughs> You're not going to do that to my man, John Diggle. That, that, Listen, Aaron Burst Rodgers, you're not doing that to John Diggle. We know, no, no. You're not going to have him like Clifford DeVoe. We're not doing yeah. this. We're not putting him. No, we're not doing this, thing, man. You you fix his back, yeah. and you and when he comes back, you make him the red arrow. Forget that Spartan mantle. mantle. Give him the crossbow. Make him the red arrow. Book it. Because he was talking about, oh, you know, the green arrow. I never knew I wanted to be the green arrow. I was like, come on, guys. Red arrow is right there. He could do it. Hey. He could do it. Hey, you know what I'm saying? I'm down. <laughs> the, the way he sees the genius says, uh, Mr. Terrific should have thrown a T-sphere at uh, Felicity. <laughs> <laughs> Just throwing it. I mean, <laughs> that's the sound he'd be making too when he throws a T-sphere. It's like, that, that doesn't sound very good. But my number two uh-huh. is your girl Rain from Super Bowl. Okay? <laughs> Deep uh, voice. I mean, look, it was a mixed <laughs> bag. It was a mixed bag, but I think... Okay, the, the the first half of the episode, I was like, I'm on board. They they they're giving me some good stuff with this character, but then when she started finding out she's like some alien weapon, and then she did like the whole Darth Vader just like sort of thing in the cave, and she was morphing, and 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 the acting was hammy. It was it was straight up hammy. I feel you on that one. Deep boys, yes. you're right. <laughs> it was a mixed bag. Okay. <laughs> It was a mixed bag full of poop, oh. <laughs> full of vomit, full of stomach ball, and full of triggery trash, and full of bum asses, man. Particularly rain, okay? Throw some roadkill in there, too. She's in a fortune of solitude, and like, I'm like, yo, Supergirl, you couldn't have like made it, made like some type of sound or noise to make it look like, you know, her brain is being invaded, she's being brainwashed. Mm-hmm. She's just standing there, and she's just like, <laughs> like, it was the most random like I honestly I was watching and I jumped because I was like oh shit. I, like, I, like, I was like why did you start screaming she was like no yeah. but like, it was it you was could have just made like a noise or like a 
or something. Like, make it seem like she's being was... brainwashed, or at least make do some type of effect, maybe a light or glow. Make me know she's being brainwashed. Like, and, 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 it, and it was also the way before she freaked out like that, where she was having a panic attack talking about what was going on. Right, that just right. seemed kind of unrealistic. She was like, I got shot. And, and, and there's a hole in my sweater. And the bullet's flat. I got shot. And I'm like, I'm like if I were that, I would have been like, I'm like, yeah, that's kind of crazy. I got shot. Yo, tell me some more. What's going on? Let me learn about this. I got told my sweater. I'm like, who reacts like that? That's that. That was so dumb. Yeah, it was a little, it's a little hammed up. It was a little over the top, man. And then but, she, she, uh, puts Jackson, her, she puts her hand in boiling water. I understand it didn't hurt her. Bro. But come on. That's you got to think of some other things before. Listen, <laughs> that's like, that, that's like step five in the test of how strong am I? <laughs> I'm going to put my hand in boiling water. <laughs> listen, y'all. Meta human advice 101 with the spectacular spoiler league. If any of y'all out there ever manifest some powers, mm -hmm. okay, first of all, don't tell anybody. <laughs> That's the first thing. Don't tell anybody. Yeah. Secondly, start off with like a needle and poke yourself. Yeah. Start off with something small. Don't put your hand in a pot of boiling water. That's going to hurt if you don't really have powers, man. Yeah. Come on. Sometimes you can't control that stuff. What if you couldn't control the powers? She's like, yo, I see this pot here. Let me put my hand in the pot. <laughs> Look at that. Not, just, not just not just one every, <laughs> every one finger. She's like, you put my whole hand in the pot. I was like, why don't you just light your house on fire? Yeah. <laughs> why not do that? I mean, you know, Jackson Herod, he said he hated how she was just suddenly Kryptonian. Uh yeah, I, I think it would have been interesting. I mean, you, you kind of have to control how she's discovering her powers. But, you know, he said he, he wished they they spent more time talking about uh, you know, her being artificially engineered or something. They're going to go into that. It, she'll get more about that, I'm sure. We'll get more about that, I'm sure. But, I, you know, it is a little interesting that she's Kryptonian, yet her powers aren't, like, necessarily malfunctioning or anything like that. But, you know, hey, maybe she's... Maybe that's part of her engineering. Maybe subconsciously she's able to, to control it in a way without her knowing. You know what I'm saying? True. Uh, cra Crazy Gaming asked if her daughter would have powers. I mean, half Kryptonian. There's never been a half Kryptonian that didn't have powers. Anybody? Did anybody know any have Kryptonian that didn't manifest powers? She's probably gonna have some powers, man. I would think so. Yeah. I would think so. But uh Deep Boys, number one bum ass. Top of the <laughs> list. Who's it gonna be? My number one bum ass for week seven. <laughs> I hope it's not mine, because I got is... one I, I think you're gonna you're gonna like. Okay. Well, my number one bum ass is none other than the fastest man alive. Oh, you read in my mind! Barry <laughs> Bum ass Allen. Bartholomew. The what? bum ass himself. Listen, yes, he was it, he was right. <laughs> yes, we get it. You were right. That's He's the villain. Too, but what are you doing? What are you doing, bro? What is you doing, baby? You're a week away from your marriage. Your wedding, rather. Your wedding. You're breaking and entering? Like a common criminal? This was the thing that got me with the breaking and entering. As, as soon as he got into went into the house, I was like... I was like, Barry, how are you not covering your face? <laughs> how are you not covering your face? You're the fastest man alive. You couldn't have made a stop to get a face mask? They took a picture of you straight in the house. I'm like, yo, also, you're, you're Barry Allen. Could you just vibrate? You don't even need a mask. Just vibrate. I mean, that would have incriminated the Flash, maybe, if they took a picture. But, man, I don't know. Like, do something. I was like, the Flash, man, come on, man. That's my number one bum ass this week. Getting restraining orders. Restraining orders. Yo, Sing, Sing was Sing was on point this week. He was like, yo, <laughs> what are you doing? He was like, he was me. He was like, yo, I should be arresting you right now. Like, real talk, he could have been arrested. I thought that they might, I thought that somehow they might take that and lead that into, you know, the Barry Allen, you know, gets arrested storyline. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it, I, you know, it's a good idea not to do that because the crossover is next week. And we'll talk about what we're going to be doing for the, for the crossover at the end of the video. But Deep Bush. Yeah. We've done our number one, our number one bum ass. Mm -hmm. It's time for the one that's got to go. One's got to go weekly. Which episode has got to go? Which episode has got to stay? Deep voice, lay it down for me. Good. Tell me what it is. Ooh, this is a little tough one. I think, you know, the show's okay. a little bit more neck and neck this week. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, I'm going to have to go with Supergirl on this one. 
Okay. Supergirl's okay. got to go. Uh, I mean, you know, not surprisingly, usually Supergirl and Legends of Tomorrow, you know, yeah, usually yeah. in consideration there. But, you know, Legends of Tomorrow is saved because it was rather run of the mill. It was just, you know, yeah. it, it made sense. Yeah. It was an episode that did, went through the usual story beats of what you would expect out of Legends of Tomorrow sure. episode. But sure. Supergirl was just, to me this week, was largely just uninteresting. Um, that's that's been a problem with Supergirl. This episode, yeah. well, I mean, what this episode really was. I mean, it, it built the revelation that was, uh, you know, Rain finding out that she's Rain, mm-hmm. Sam finding out she's Rain, and and Monel and and his wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, but really and truly, in the long run, like what, I just felt like it just, I feel like they tread water for a majority of the the episode, yeah. and they focus on the drama. And like, listen, I know. I know some people are like super hype on having, you know, people in costume and fighting. And they pretty much had very little of that on, on Supergirl. And, you know, I, I'm not necessarily for against that. If the drama is good, I'm totally fine with that mm-hmm. not being the case. But it's just like they don't really, you know, develop anything. It just yeah. didn't feel I mean, I can't say they didn't develop anything because obviously there's plot developments. Mm-hmm. But it just feels like they tread water for yeah, like a I... significant period of time before you actually get something. This my one's gotta go buy a hair this week. Because Legends, you were on deck. Because if it wasn't for Grodd, your asses would have been. Oh, yeah, and, oh, yeah, I, I, I agree. If it wasn't, you were this close. If it wasn't for Grodd, it would have been over, man. Because costume design for Legends, I was not feeling that Vietnam era. I never were. Like, usually, they, I was thinking the same thing. Usually I thought they were something off. Right. right, but usually they do something. Usually they are right with like costume design for whatever era they're in. They're usually really good, but the 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 like, uh, I guess the army gear that they're wearing i think the color was a little bit off for some of the stuff they're rocking i mean yeah. maybe i'm just wrong maybe i don't know anything about the vietnam war you know and, what i mean and i just but think I just like, like the styling too was a little a little off yes the styling looked a little bit off man it looked like it looked like i don't know it looked like they went to like some random store and they're like dag yo i gotta get yourself from someone from the vietnam war for this for this costume party i'm going to let me go buy a shirt that looks like i could rock it in the vietnam war and it's just like it's something about the, the costume design wasn't great. And it took me out of it. It yeah. took me out of it. But, uh, yeah, no, you know, it's... Yeah, but Supergirl's definitely the ones that's got to go for me. Um, so yeah. I'm just looking at what, du- what Silas007 mm-hmm. is saying in the chat about Supergirl. He said, it's weird that the filler episode before this one on Supergirl was better. Yeah? Well, yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. I mean, I, I almost... I kind of almost want to maybe have a discussion about that someday. Yeah. I mean, what, what exactly is the aim of Supergirl? Like, wh- is there a reason why episode to episode it doesn't really seem like it's going towards anything i i feel like it, it, they're in some and you saw smallville I, I unfortunately i never really got to watch it but i feel like they're, yeah. they're they're in the middle ground between lois and clark and smallville or something like is it budgetary yeah. concerns like is it that they just want to tell more human stories but like lois and clark had some interesting stories you know sure. and, and i feel like smallville definitely had it's like uh I guess human centered and, and, and relationship centered storylines. But you know, Absolutely. they brought some action. They brought some like threats and they brought some like things that were interesting that were happening from season to season. But like Supergirl's not really fully committing in any one direction. I'm wondering is it budgetary concerns because, you know, animating Supergirl flying and all her powers and that kind of stuff maybe takes up a lot of money. Uh, are, yeah. are they just do they have their hands tied in terms of like what villains or what threats they can use? Because even then I feel like that's not that's you know now that I'm talking about, it, I don't think that's a good enough of an excuse. You could you could kind of do your most with scraps. Yeah, I, I feel like CW is trying to appeal to the core demographic or the core demographic that originally uh, popularized the WB, which is the predecessor to the CW and now the CW, which was you know the the young adult uh, you know female demographic. And while Supergirl, you know, obviously I think does appeal to that demographic, what you know is stereotypically attributed to that demographic. Mm-hmm. I feel like. Supergirl, and this is not even an insult to Supergirl, and this is obviously going to not be a negative assessment, but, like, for lack of a better way to say it, Supergirl sometimes is boring. Yeah. It's boring. Like, it's not it's not entertaining. It's not riveting. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that the actors aren't good. I feel like, you know, Melissa Benoist, I feel like, you know, she plays, like, the upbeat Kara, you know, pretty well. I do feel like this Supergirl is very too much like Clark Kent. I feel like she's very much like Clark Kent, and it's almost not fair to the Supergirl character. <laughs> From the comics but you know that aside you know martian manhunter you know i feel like he's wallowing but he's a great actor you know the the, the actor they have playing him you know david harewood he's great mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying uh uh you know uh 
her sister, I, I just Kara. Her, Alex. Alex, yeah. Uh, yeah, Alex. Alex, you know, they're, they're great actors. Like, they're good. Uh, Jimmy Olsen, he's a bum ass. But everybody else. <laughs> and when? I mean, when when Scott Brooks is a good actor. It's just they give him, they give Jimmy Olsen like nothing. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for me, I'm just like, Supergirl is just, it's just boring. It's boring. And I know some people have different complaints about, poli poli you know, politics being it. That's not the mm -hmm. problem. It's Supergirl, you know, when I think about it from beginning of the episode to the end, it's it's not entertaining. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and, it, 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 it still doesn't have its identity, I almost feel like. Yeah, yeah. And I, it's not even a question of it being, like, bad. I don't think it's, like, terrible. But like you're saying, yeah. you make a good point. It's just boring. It's just things happen, and it's like, well. Seems mundane. Ah, uh, yeah, mundane. And and someone in the chat, Dwayne Caesar Jr., makes a good point. Uh, he, he thought that every ending in, this, in the Arrowverse episodes this week would reference the crossover, and they kind of didn't. Yeah, I mean, John Diggle kind of did a wink-wink. Mm -hmm. uh you know for for arrow uh but when he was like saying he wasn't gonna tell oliver his secret and he was like oh i'll wait till next week and like the camera focused on it for a second i was like damn they're gonna wait till the beginning of the crossover for him to tell him but you know they ended up telling him anyway because next week is the crossover it obviously couldn't wait to be told next week mm -hmm. because oliver needs to be back in the suit by the crossover mm -hmm. but uh no that's a, that's a great point i mean jackson harrod also said something and i agree with this i know you feel petty because you say you feel petty for this but he said you know I know it's petty with me, but I still don't like the laser blue vision that Supergirl has. Even after so many episodes, it still takes me out of it sometimes. 100% agree. Not a fan of the blue laser vision. I mean, I know there's the, the whole notion that... I mean, I don't even know if this is true, but, you know, some people say that blue blue fire is hotter and stuff like that. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't really care. Hazy, she's got her ultra instinct. <laughs> Shout out to Dragon Ball Super. But... I mean, the red or orange heat, be heat beams, that needs to be the thing. It just doesn't have that, like, this is hot feel with it being blue. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Something about it just doesn't work. So I actually agree with that. But those are minor nitpicks. Yeah. But anyway, Deep Boys, what's your one that's got to stay? My one's got to stay, yet again, is Arrow. Yeah. It's yeah. almost every that's, week it's Arrow. Uh, that's you my know, one that's got to stay this week. Th this one, in terms of quality, dipped just a little bit. Yeah. But... You know, for what they were going for and the story they were trying to tell uh, and just kind of the interpersonal uh, relations, I guess, that they had in this episode, I really dug. And even some of the small things here and there, you know, like there was a quick little interaction between Dinah and uh, uh, Detective Lance, Lance you yeah, know, about yeah. about going up against evil versions or, 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 or their loved ones gone bad, you sure, know. Sure. Um, uh, Curtis Holt, who's someone that I think should at some point step up, stepped up. I like yeah. what they did with yeah. him in this episode. Like you said, yeah. Oliver was a Renaissance he man. The, he wasn't the, I mean, uh, yeah. you know, Curtis Holt wasn't the pushover no. he normally is. No. But yeah, but Oliver. Yeah. And, and, Oliver and, and, he was a Renaissance man. Yeah, he, he was a brother, <laughs> a father, a lover, a friend. Yeah. He was, he was all of them. Right, Thea Queen, a brother, right? Yeah. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, Thea, Thea Queen, Queen. Also back. Back out yeah, of the I mean, uh, <laughs> crack induced coma. Yeah, I mean, some people, you know, some people in chat, particularly Silence 007, is saying Flash stepped up. I agree. Flash was really good this week. It was. Really good this week. Um, that honestly would have been my one's got to go by, one's got to stay by a hair. But for me, I think that the issue is, it's really, you know, <laughs> I felt like Team Flash was a little bit too hard on Barry, even though Barry was like, you know, going a little crazy. Just like nobody was giving him like any benefit of the doubt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they were they were kind of being a little bit over yeah. the top with like, you know, they're 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 sort of like not taking him seriously with this, you know, thinking that he's freaking out. And so that kind of took it down a notch for me. Meanwhile mm -hmm. on Arrow, you've got Oliver Queen with everyone dying. Oliver Queen with Diggle. You got Felicity with Mr. Terrific. Mm -hmm. You got, you know, uh you've got uh Canary with uh Lance. Mm -hmm. You've got Wild Dog, you know, interacting with everybody, you know, like I just yeah. felt like the team, the, the dynamics between everybody just works. Yeah. It and feels good when you're watching it. It reminds me of like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Word. You know what I mean? Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. always has dope team interactions. Even Caden James interacting with Black Siren gave you shades of like a dark team arrow. You know, which, you know, they said that uh, Arrow of the Season is going to have sort of a, an anti team arrow that they're going up against. You see Caden James sort of, you know, serving that Overwatch role and Black Siren, you know, infiltrating you know, the situations Absolutely. to kind of do some, some, some evil. I mean, that was sort of a, a, a I mean, I'm sure this, they, they're going to build on it, but it felt mm. like a throwaway plot, so to speak, just kind of like a backdrop. But 
you know, it had like shades of Agents of Shield in terms of his character interaction. I just love that. I love that. Yeah, and also I want to say in terms of this episode of Flash being being good, it was darker than pretty much a lot of the other episodes previously. Like, or yeah, rather, and- not darker, but I say more serious, more mature, yeah. and, and then you know that the stakes were higher, where they were kind of really getting to the meat of what the season is about, and then they just kind of stop all the silly stuff. And I think that Flash needed to strike that balance with this season because it was it's Flash was getting a little too silly at times. Yeah, and they needed to, they needed to, to throw that seriousness seriousness in there. And I think the thinker and the mechanic were really well done. Both of them were really well done. I liked it a lot. Um, so you know that's sort of like I guess a second one that's got to stay if I could pick one. But that being said, Deep Boys, before we wrap things up, I want to talk about what we're going to be doing for the crossover next week, next week Monday and Tuesday. So, if if you're watching this video late, then you don't need to worry about this. But if you're watching this uh, prior to November, uh, I think it's 27th or 28th, correct me if I'm wrong, Deep Boys. But um, we're going to be doing a live stream after the part one of the crossover where we're just going to react. We're going to talk to you guys about our thoughts about that part one. And then on Tuesday, Tuesday is going to be the Arrowverse Weekly One Shot. So, we'll talk about everything with the crossover. We'll pick our top five. You know, character power rankings. We'll pick our top three bum asses, and we'll pick our uh, ones that gotta go weekly uh, for that week. So, two live streams will be happening directly after the crossover. So, the crossover is gonna end. It's gonna be two nights, right? So, part one of the crossover is going to to end at 10 p.m. So, we'll probably be streaming at 10:15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tuesday. Also going live at 10 p.m. 10:15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will not be streaming that thursday okay at least in terms of uh the hour uh the hour verse uh you know weekly one shot i mean some news could come up and we end up live streaming but officially there's going to be no weekly live stream on that thursday it's going to be monday a reaction tuesday the ones gotta go the the power rankings the bum asses hour verse weekly one shot but that being said deep boys we're about to head on out of here but first if you haven't that subscribe button you need to do it support the spectacular league help us flesh out the ranks here hit that little bell icon right next to the subscribe button to turn on notifications drop us a like if you're in chat right now if you're in the chat please drop us a like to get this video out there help us spread this video out there and recruit some leaguers to the cause me and deep boys we getting on out of here to go uh, rip up barry allen's restraining order <laughs> yeah i don't we'll think see. we have five hundred thousand dollars like i, I like uh, felicity does to, yeah, to like bail out all the queen and, and get rid of all this stuff. But uh, thank you guys for all the support. Everybody in the chat right now, you know, thank you guys. Everybody watching this as a video after the fact, much love. We'll see you guys on the next one. We getting out of here. Peace out. Peace.